back again with another video. Um, this video is one that I get, or a topic that I get very passionate about, um, and it's to do with the sales and marketing relationship. Um, so many times I see organisations where there's just such a disconnect between the marketing department obviously have their own budget, um, they've already decided on the products that they want, they use them, they have their monthly subscription to them, um, and it's always in the best interest for them and their reporting and their analytics and their next step. Um, and what sometimes I've seen happen is that's all well and good, but the sales team don't have any visibility on what their strategy is, when the emails are going out, what the content of the email might be, what are they promoting, um, and what their intention for generating leads may be for the week, the month, you know, and potentially the year. Um, so where it gets interesting with Salesforce is the fact that you can, you know, we throw this around a lot, but this 360 degree visual of a customer record. Um, and all that really means is that if marketing have made some effort or spent some money, then um, whatever that uh, investment has created that lead, you can see the history. You can have to see exactly what campaign, what was the touch point, and it's now in the CRM for the appropriate sales team member to, you know, now ring them or email them or what, however, you know, you guys perform your um, usual sales practice. So, yeah, this video is just basically to introduce how you might look at um, sort of navigating that within the Salesforce CRM and what ability out of the box or what starting blocks you might have out of the box because the other thing I'm very passionate about is when you do pay for Salesforce um, or even as a not-for-profit, you know, you might have under sort of 10 licenses, it's still about getting the most out of the product that you've purchased. You know, you're in this for the long haul now. So, you know, what can you be using for different areas of the business, different departments um, within your organisation? So, um, as usual, I'm just going to share my screen and, yeah, just take a bit of a dive into what Salesforce, um, to accommodate both the sales and marketing efforts, gives you. So, generally speaking, when you... Um, start with Salesforce, you will have um, hopefully a marketing plan of some sort. Um, and it would start with campaigns. So your marketing team, and I totally understand that we've got people that are, is just them. So it's just the one person that's doing absolutely everything. They're a small business and they only have one or three licenses. So first of all, I would be thinking about from the marketing perspective and with my strategy of bringing people into my CRM is setting up campaigns because you might have multiple ways that you're thinking about bringing people in. Um, so I'm using my um, Trailhead Playground just to demonstrate because um, when you sign up for a Trailhead account, you get a sort of playground or which is a really great place to play around with how things might look for you, you know, after purchasing Salesforce. So this gives you a bit of a feel for it. So out of the box, um, they've given us some, some dummy data here. So as an example, they're saying this could be a direct mailer campaign that you list um, when you're starting it, when you're ending it, what you've budgeted. So that could be, you know, including graphics and print costs and circulation distribution costs. You know, the budget of this campaign gets populated. And then once you get all your invoices and everything through for that particular campaign, you can actually put your actuals in. Um, and then you have the list of the different types of campaigns. Obviously, this one's a direct mailer, but if you have other ways and other types of campaigns, um, you can populate that pick list, no problem. So it's just a bit of configuration there. Um, and then what status the particular campaign is. So, you know, what generally people will do is list out all their campaigns, everything from events and conferences and uh, SMS uh, strategies, it might be a bit of Facebook or Instagram, social media, um, landing pages, it could be a local newspaper ad, you name it, list them all here. All the activities that you're going to be doing, your marketing campaigns, um, and you literally just create a new one. 
and then you follow this uh, layout. Now, if there's things here that are missing that you would like to have, it's the same as all the other videos that we've sort of gone through. You can create custom fields, uh, depending on what license type you have, but custom fields um, to capture any other extra bits and pieces that you want um, around a campaign. And then once it's created, um, it's in the system and you can then um, manage the status of it and campaigns might have different um, statuses too, particularly if you're still awaiting budget, you're still awaiting receipts, I don't know, whatever, whatever it might be. But again, you can relate campaigns to, you know, different objects um, and it gets a bit more interesting because this is where you then start to see and start to use campaigns in relationship to those other objects. And the key one might be that you're running a campaign to potentially leads that you're currently nurturing. So you've got leads in the system that haven't quite uh, converted across. So within campaign, you can um, add leads and contacts to a campaign. And then you can then mail those or email or whatever you need to do to connect with those people. Um, so you can literally add leads and add contacts to this particular campaign and then look for their response and the response rate um, to this campaign from those individuals. So that will, you know, essentially give some analytics, some bit of reporting, but most importantly, it means when you do add uh, someone to a, um, I'll have to try and find one now. Um, try and actually we might do it the other way around. So if I went to leads and find, find a lead, so you might have done a bit of segmentation work, which means you know, you've got a list view of uh, open leads that you then might create a further segmentation. Um, and then it may be off last activity or something, I don't know. But um, you then go into a lead as an example, as I said, and you can actually add them to a campaign. So, Campaign history, add to campaign. So that, that's popped up with the one that I just had. So yes, you can do it from within the lead, but you can also search for leads. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe you've got guys that are on the phones and um, they can now see a list of leads and contacts that you know were emailed a particular invitation to an event or something like that. They're doing calls and they could actually update, um, you know, or inbound calls that are, oh, we received this invitation, thanks very much. And, you know, personal reception can also update um, the campaign status. So this is just, look, very high level kind of um, summary view of this object of campaign and working with leads, so maybe unconverted leads or contacts that perhaps you did convert, but there's no traction. So you can then add them to a current campaign. Um, and it's a nice way also to be able to organize the financial side of things to actually to, if you're, um, particularly if you're a smaller business that needs to keep an eye on absolutely everything that's going on in your CRM, you know, this is a great way to see what you've budgeted for the year in um, marketing activities. Um, it might be a specific, you know, Google ad or something like that, that you might be running. It could all be in one spot. But like I said, the beauty is then not only if you go marketing, people go into the, um, the campaign, they can see campaign members, they can add who they need to add um, by their segmentation uh, criteria to the campaign. But more importantly, sales team members, if there's a particular, you know, communication from the marketing team across to the sales team to say, you know what, this is a campaign that we're running and we want you guys to, you know, hit the phones and connect with as many people that you know to invite them. This is something that your sales team can also add members into. So then you do have a more accurate number of, um, you know, reach or potential reach of real people, campaign ROI. So beauty of being all the way back here at the campaign level and you're populating the budgeted amount and then you're going to populate how much it actually cost 
it does mean that anywhere along a lead or contacts journey that has had that campaign touch point, um, it means once the lead or contact has in turn gone into create an opportunity, they are now opportunity, they are now closed one. What you then can do is absolutely show the return on investment. So by that, I mean, we've got the amount field on the opportunity and you've got your actual cost on the campaign. Salesforce has a number of campaign reports out of the box. So I would jump in to reports. I would jump into campaigns. You can create custom reports as well if there's if this really doesn't um, cut the mustard but there's a number of different ones so you may be looking at campaigns with campaign members these bottom three I reckon would be your best um, out-of-the-box solution and what I might also suggest would be creating a custom formula field potentially on the campaign or on uh, opportunity record that basically is the maths equation to give you the percentage if you need a percentage but basically actual cost on the campaign and actual sale amount to give you your return on investment um, so this report here which is a campaign report with leads and converted lead information um, so that that one there that would be a typical one that potential marketing would use because they want to see the conversion rate from their efforts on that campaign how many leads are now converting across to actual conversations and on an opportunity level and that other one that i saw the very bottom one which was campaign with influenced was it or was it campaigns with influenced opportunity i like that the sound of this one so this one here is showing you, and you can add more fields to this, but this is showing you the overview of the campaign name, how many responded, the source, uh, the name of the person, their role if you need that, opportunity name, the amount, the stage, and the date that it's gonna close. So you could then, you could probably add in your actual cost and campaign field to this, and then potentially a new this campaign. Um, and activities can be added to it as well. So again, people creating tasks against the campaign or logging calls to actually like generate hype about this particular thing that we're doing. Um, it all contributes to, you know, marketing effort and creativity. This is what we're doing. This is our idea and this is going to be wonderful. And our sales team members can also interact within that same marketing campaign. This again, like I've mentioned with other videos, the beauty of, Salesforce with all these different related objects, it does mean there's a far more collaborative central point of truth. Um, and that's why I suppose the term of a customer relationship management, because different areas of the business will have touch points on this one record in Salesforce. Later on down the track, or even currently, if you're bombarding somebody, a prospect, a lead, contact with too much marketing material they may make a complaint so and if that's the case then you may be creating a case you might be doing a bit of complaints management on this record and guess what then once you've got a complaint on a particular lead contact record you can then omit people from your segmentation that have a current in-flight complaint and therefore you're not going to be bombarding those people um, whilst there's active um, complaints around that person. You know, there's no need if they're having a poor experience at the time, then don't market to them. And this would be another way that you would know that there is other activity happening on this particular record. Now, if these things all happened in silo, like I mentioned, if the marketing team are just using their products, customer experience and customer service teams are using this over here and the sales teams are using you know, spreadsheets or whatever, their, their outlook, it, then this is where you're not, you can't join the dots. But the Salesforce out of the box system, it does allow you to tie everything together so that before you make a phone call, before you make a sales call, before you send uh, a direct mailer out, you can start to exclude the people that wouldn't appreciate being contacted or 
you'll actually have quality data, hopefully, that shows how interested somebody is and sell, send correct, um, more targeted uh, marketing material. And the other nice thing would be um, also for marketers to perhaps populate the calendar with when they're expecting to send uh, marketing material out. Um, sorry, just click campaigns again. So um, we, there is a calendar in Salesforce. And um, again, I'm just talking from a very basic getting to know the system baseline of potential use cases that, you know, you could absolutely create a new calendar with marketing so that um, all your users are aware of emails going out or a social media campaign that's currently running um, and it's all in the calendar with everyone able to view that. The other thing is if you are sending email from Salesforce, so if you are creating um, a particular email list to send out a Salesforce and it's a nice sort of pretty um, HTML email, then you're going to also see the um, activity on the people, get my words out, on the leads um, and contacts that were sent it. So again, it's further information that someone that is managing and nurturing these particular prospects or customers in the future, they're gonna have um, existing activity in their, um, in their history of, of activity. So where emails have gone out or an email list has gone out, it's going to be listed. Um, and again, it's just another tick that these salespeople have more information about what was sent to them on the last date. They've got something to talk about. Um, they can see what the content was and things are far more relevant. So it's another perk and it's another way to start to get those two uh, areas connected in a more, um, I suppose, in a more native way by using a system that you know, everything is definitely connected. Then um, if you do have, you know, you don't, well, you don't want to use um, Salesforce out of the box um, email lists, um, you're not gonna have email templates set up. You could use something like a campaign monitor or a MailChimp. Now, they exist on the App Exchange, which means you can connect your current MailChimp account or uh, campaign monitor account. Um, probably just type in email, and um, you can install um, email uh, applications to connect to Salesforce. So it's not necessarily meaning that you have to be completely high and dry of not using multiple applications and systems, um, but you could definitely um, go down some, some route like this. So here we go, um, as an example, MailChimp's quite a popular one. Um, and also you have Campaign Monitor. And these are the two that I've worked with in the past to connect to Salesforce. Um, and they're very, very good. So it all integrates um, down to that lead or contact record that you're using. And that's just a matter of installing that in. And they have their own associated, um, they have their own associated costs involved with their own subscriptions, which you may already be paying. But again, it's a possibility to be able to connect um, marketing that may already have chosen those products, um, but integrate it back into a system where it's going to connect to um, the lead and contact uh, record that's relevant to the sales pe um, people. Um, and I say sales people, it may be, they may be called something else in your organization, but it's more, this is just an example of what you could start to be thinking about in relation to well, how do we t make the two sales and marketing um, strategies um, available to both parties? How can we all collaborate? How can we see everything in one view? Um, and even to, down to that point, and I'm very, very cautious of if, if someone does complain and then you have, um, you know, cases or issues. It could even be um, an example of a billing issue currently. So it's actually like something that 
your uh, current organisation has raised against account or a contact that, you know, there's an outstanding bill. So therefore, you know, if there's a bit of uh, animosity, would it be appropriate for a salesperson to call? So again, furthering the next area of the business that may or organisation that may need interaction point to go actually what's happening on this lead or what's happening on this contact because we'd like to see the full customer view and you you would be able to achieve it so i hope that's helpful um like i said very baseline level but this is what this series is all about is to give um, and share that little bit of information of um starting to progress if you're looking at this sort of crm how um sort of the go-to kind of um, guidance, if you like, and things to think about whilst you're planning out before you, you know, spend money on a, on a subscription. But this is a really hot topic because I just have seen a number of times where there is a lot of disconnect and this would be um, an introduction into how you might um, be able to handle it within Salesforce. So hopefully that's useful. And um, if you've got any questions, just leave a comment below.